Hi, this is Paula Jay. Today I've got uh, Jeff Hicks. Uh, he is an absolute uh, professional uh, in PowerShell, and not only in that, obviously. And he's got uh, 25 years of experience, or over 25 years, working in um, the infrastructure field. And uh, he's also an MVP within the PowerShell specialization or cloud and data center as how we call it uh, right now because well, whatever that is <laughs> whatever that is but uh, PowerShell is definitely um, the thing here and uh, Jeff you also have a Twitter account and a blog right yes uh, you can find me on Twitter at at Jeff Hicks and from there it'll link you to my blog and everything else so yeah that's great you should definitely check this out because Jeff writes <coughs> uh, numerous amounts of, uh, of uh, books and uh, you are an author or co-author mm -hmm. of a different interesting books uh, on PowerShell that you should guys definitely check out. But uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So thank you. And I got uh, a bunch of disturbing questions today. Okay, I'll, um, I'll answer horrifically then. Okay, that's great. So so um, I, I'm the penetration tester by myself, and uh, I've uh, noticed that since PowerShell uh, has become such a popular tool for everybody like administrators and uh, also some um, other guys from other specializations, I'm using actually PowerShell for hacking. But do, do you think that PowerShell could be a good hacking tool? Because what's your feeling about that? You know, this comes up all the time because people, and it came up when PowerShell first came out. You know, because that was, we just come from the days of VB Script and Melissa and I love you and all those yeah. ugly things. So everyone's, oh no, Microsoft's going to do it to us again. And well, yes and no. I mean, PowerShell is a terrific management tool. It's for IT pros. They can get an enormous amount of work done with very little work. So naturally, if you are a hacker or a bad actor and you want to get a lot of bad things done really quickly, sure, PowerShell is a great tool to use, primarily because not only do you have all the built-in commandlets, but you also have direct access to the .NET framework. So if you a, have a developer background, there's an enormous amount of things you can do, provided you first get access. Yeah, of course. But yeah, once you have access, I mean, if you already own the box, the fact that you're using PowerShell is really irrelevant. You're already in bad yeah. doo-doo. Yeah. Um, but sure, yeah, if I'm a bad guy, and I want to get a lot done quickly, including cleaning up my tracks, um, PowerShell is a perfect tool for that. Yeah, especially we've got like so many different additional modules that you can get that are uh, free to be to be downloaded um, that could help you out with sure. more hacking activities. Yep. There is some mimikats uh, also written in PowerShell. So, so you're able to steal credentials uh, just by using the PowerShell. And, uh, <coughs> what I personally think it's cool within the hacking uh, case is that PowerShell, it, it's not something that is recognized by antivirus, right? Right, because it, it's a management engine. The PowerShell itself has to be hosted in an application. And you can spin up a PowerShell engine just from a, a CMD prompt or even, I think, in memory. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so antivirus stuff can't necessarily detect that. And it's not like people are going to be running scripts because that's, that is something that maybe antivirus could detect. Mm -hmm. um, but no, the antivirus can't do that. We do have new things in PowerShell version 5.1 where Microsoft has really ratcheted up the logging. Mm. So you may not necessarily be able to know immediately, oh, I'm, I'm in, I've been compromised, but you'll be able to go back after the fact and dig through all the logs and identify, okay, what did they do? Who did it? What machines did they access? How did they get in? So, at least from a forensic recovery point of view, you've got much more information now than we ever did in previous versions of PowerShell. And it's so accessible, right? And it's, it's very accessible, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I'm wondering, because uh, um, in general, uh, from the PowerShell perspective, that could be also the tool that uh, people are afraid of, um, like administrators <coughs> are afraid of, uh, that PowerShell could be used in the enterprise to perform hacking and they will never uh, see that. Do you have any advice for, for such people? Well, you know, PowerShell by default has built-in safety guards. Yeah. You know, they're not access security boundaries. They're like the lid on the nuclear launch button. You know, you gotta lift up the lid. Yeah. But you have first have access to reach the lid to lift it up. So there are things like script execution. By default, you cannot run a PowerShell script. And also then, like if someone were getting a malicious script in email and they double click it, you know, we're not gonna have a PowerShell script run. You can certainly change that as an admin if you don't know what you're doing. And 
totally incompetent and you should be fired um, and have something bad run. Or if someone copies the contents of that script, mm. opens a PowerShell prompt, pastes it in, if they have the permissions mm -hmm. and the necessary tools, PowerShell will happily do that. Yeah. So that's an easy fix. You don't give your users, including admins, they're not running with elevated credentials. Yeah. So their PowerShell sessions pretty much always open as lower admin. Yeah. So even if somehow unintended code was executed, you know, they don't have the necessary permissions to do that. Yeah. That's a great way to limit, just look at just common sense. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. There, there is also the just enough administration, yes, for, for yes. 16. What do you think about that one? So just, just enough administration is a remoting tool, tool set really, that is designed for admins to provide a more secure remoting environment. I mean, PowerShell, the way that it really shines in an enterprise is I can manage a thousand servers all at once. I want to find like querying event logs. I need to check the system event log for searching for, say, maybe when some service restarted or some other indication of that I've been compromised. Mm -hmm. So PowerShell remoting makes it really easy. However, by default, you have to be an admin and you get access to everything. But with Gia, you can create what's called a constrained or delegated endpoint. Mm -hmm. So I can still connect to a server, but then I can say, you know, only these people can connect to that endpoint. And when they connect, they can only run these commands. Which is pretty cool. And even further, I can say, you know what? They can run these commands, but they can only use these parameters. And if these parameters, they can only be these set of values. So you can really restrict what they can do. And we can take this even further and tying it in with um, the GIA, with uh, the Just Enough Administration Toolkit. There are two GIA tools, I always mm -hmm. get confused where you can, in essence, kind of push out an endpoint mm -hmm. and give someone, say, hey, you have you know, a half hour to go do your thing, mm -hmm. and then that endpoint is gone, and you no longer have access. Oh, yeah. So Microsoft recognizes that there are certainly a lot of vulnerabilities, and people can certainly take advantage of PowerShell and remoting, yeah. and we're doing things to make that harder, and, and education is a big part of it. Mm. So one, you know, another thing worth remoting, since you mentioned it, yeah. is a lot of people think, and I'm going to talk about this in my session tomorrow because I'm talking about remoting, mm -hmm. a lot of IT pros think that once they turn on PowerShell remoting, they're done. Oh, okay. But, yeah. but it's not. PowerShell remoting, turning that on, which you have to have on now because mm -hmm. there's no way you can manage things in, in Windows, is really only first step. People forget, oh, well, I could configure firewall rules mm -hmm. or use IPsec or use other... There's a whole source of networking tools that we have. That they totally forget. They think, oh, it's PowerShell. I'm done. Yeah. No, that's really just the first step. You don't have to have all your servers accessible from every IP address in your environment, right? That's a good point. I just want my domain admins. Mm -hmm. I know what their desktops are. Mm -hmm. Only they have access. So I can do things networking-wise. You can trim that to those I, I can I can trim that. So yeah. that's something a lot of IT pros, I think, forget. They, mm -hmm. they just see PowerShell, they get excited, oh, remoting turn on, I can access all these boxes and I'm good to go. And if you really want to be secure, yeah. you have more work that you have to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what we also see from our site, um, that for example, there are companies that want to implement code execution prevention solutions. And by default, even in AppLocker in Windows, you've got the possibility to turn on the default rules, as they call them. And default rules allow to run everything that is in the Windows folder and everything that is in Program Files folder. So they forget that it could be also a dangerous tool if it's in a user's hands and the user doesn't know what to do. It's still a user, but um, we can also, for example, encrypt the data with PowerShell mm -hmm. and ask for a ransom. Just an idea uh, we, were, we were also thinking about. Okay, so um, wh what do you think and how PowerShell could improve infrastructure security uh, and how, how to make it uh, a good securing tool for our, for our servers uh, in order to be successful to uh, win the battle against hackers, yeah? yeah? All right, so a couple of things that come to mind. First, PowerShell version 5.1 is now available, mm -hmm. including down level down to 2008 R2, mm -hmm. which hopefully that's the minimum level that people are running on their servers. That is something that I would encourage people to deploy. Check the readme so you're not running on a server that may have some special limitations, but that caveat aside, because with the 5.1, you will get all the latest security 
features like the logging and all of that. All right, so first thing, make sure you're running most version, current version PowerShell. Mm -hmm. Another feature that I think could really fall into this security category is DSC, Desired okay. State Configuration. It's a great feature. Because with DSC, I can create a configuration, say I want this server to look like this. I want to have these services, these registry keys, these features, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I can either configure the server to pull it from a central server or push it to it. But what's key here is I can configure that server and say, hey, check every 15 minutes. And if something is out of compliance, out of the configuration, mm -hmm. reset it. That's great. Now, you could even take that because DSC is really a framework. Um, I have been told that there's a, some part of the Department of Defense in the US, mm -hmm. they use DSC and they built some of their own tools and they have a mechanism because they want to check faster than every 15 minutes, mm -hmm. that if they detect that the server has been, is out of compliance, they assume it's been breached and they kill it. Okay. And they have automated procedures to bring up a new server because they already know what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. And so it's all automated, it's so like that. That's now they may, yeah. you know, they may kill the server, take it offline so they can, you know, analyze it later and say, okay, what happened? Yeah. Was this a real problem or did someone, some interns just do something they weren't supposed to do? Mm -hmm. But using DSC is, would be a great way to make sure that the server is always configured the way I want it to be. Which actually brings me to an interesting conclusion uh, that DSC, for example, could be a part of the incident response plan. Like, for example, when we've got a problem, we're getting hacked. Like you said, the, one of the servers is affected and so on. Okay, we just wipe it with the full comfort inside that we've got the solution that is working pretty good to make things up again. Yeah. And we are back to operation, yeah? The whole point that you'll hear from Microsoft, so it's from Jeffrey Snover, is that IT pros need to start treating their servers like cattle mm -hmm. and not like pets. Oh, that's a good comparison. <laughs> right, because I mean, for the longest time, I've been in IT for over 25 years, you know, we would build a server, it would take, it would take you a week to build a server. If you have to order hardware, you gotta put all the, everything in, you can manually load the floppy disks to get everything. It would take a long time, you'd lovingly handcraft that server. And if something went wrong, oh, I'll fix you, baby, you know, you'll be fine. But you, we can't do that anymore. For now, for one thing, servers are up in the cloud. Yeah. You know, they're not down the hallway and, and all of that. So now we just decide, and we don't give it fancy, beautiful names. And now it's just, it's just a number. Just whatever, yeah. And if the server is compromised or fails in whatever way, I don't take the time to try to fix it. I just make hamburger yeah. and um, fire yeah. up a new machine yeah. and <laughs> send the configuration, and I know that I'm, I'm good to go. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's very cool. So uh, here comes the... A uh, challenging question, and that question <laughs> is, uh, if we've got like someone that is at the very beginning uh, of, of their career, and they look at you and they're like, oh, I want to be like him. Like, I want to know like all the partial stuff and uh, be, a, be a true geek. What would you advise to, to such a person? Uh, well, they have to, I mean, certainly there are lots of books and stuff. I actually have a page on my blog for essential PowerShell resources oh. for that, because I get that asked all the time. Okay. What books am I supposed to look at? What videos and all yeah, that? Okay. So I have, I mean, obviously I've written and created a lot of that, so I have that as well as forms to go. But the big thing about learning PowerShell is that it's a language. It's like if I were to try to learn Polish, mm -hmm. I would need to use it every day in yeah. order to become fluent in it. Absolutely. And so PowerShell is the same way. You have to find ways to use it every day. That's the big, that's the number one takeaway. So there. someone should just spend their time, like, and be there every day, study, learn, read books, etc. Even even if you do nothing more than read the help topics on some command mm -hmm. once a day. Okay. Um, that could do. Yeah, like learning one word in a foreign language. Exactly. Yeah, learn <coughs> learning something new. As long, but you have to, and you have to to use it. Sure. And what about the advanced guys? So you've got like an administrator in the infrastructure and he's like knowing, of course, all that stuff that he manages or she manages. And, uh, and basically, uh, this guy wants to know uh, more in PowerShell, be better, be fluent. Uh, so what kind of advice would you give to such a person? I'm going to give them actually kind of two little advices. One is turn around and share your knowledge with the younger person. Not only because that's the right thing to do, but also in the fact of trying to formulate your thoughts, going, how am I going to communicate or share what I know? You may realize, oh, maybe I don't know that as well as I should. Hmm. I need to go back and brush up. And so, you know, you learn a bit more in trying to teach someone. You have no choice but to 
really learn it yourself. So that'd be number one. Mm -hmm. And then the second is you just have to take this idea of using it every day just to the next level. You need to be the person who is creating the DSC configurations and the, the PowerShell tools that you're using to monitor servers, to provide the forensic analysis if you've been compromised or the monitoring tools. So you need to be, so you'll need then to obviously to learn new things like the .NET framework. You'll need to learn some of the advanced commands. You need to start thinking, go to some of the, the, the secret hacker conferences yeah, okay. and, <laughs> and learn you know, the bad ways and find ways, okay, how can I do that in PowerShell hmm. and try to be you know, more proactive. There's like a little saying that if you want to, if, if you feel like you know something, you can test it perfectly by explaining this to your grandfather. Yes, and then like the newest technologies, my grandfather, my, my grandfather <coughs> is going to be like, what are you talking about? But maybe it's the same like this with the PowerShell. Like you, you have to be able to explain it to the younger. Right, if you cannot explain it to someone yeah. or teach someone, then you don't know it well enough. Exactly, exactly. I've been using PowerShell since it was in beta. Uh -huh. you know, co-wrote one of the first books. I. I pretty much, I think, I go to bed and I dream, what can I do in PowerShell? Do you dream in PowerShell? I do actually dream in PowerShell. Seriously, this yeah. is so funny. Yeah. Can I, I will, ask you what I was like? I dream about something, <laughs> some script that I'm working on or some ah. project or what I'm going to work on the next day. I think, oh, oh, that's how I'm going to get around that problem. Yes, yeah, so yes, I do. That is so So cool. that's how you can tell, right? Because I say that when you're learning a foreign language, if you start dreaming in that language, then you have learned it. Well, I dream in English, for example, oh, like, okay. because right. I work in English all the time. So when I go to bed, I think like, okay, stuff in English, and then I realize, well, hey, wait, I'm Polish. So maybe I should think in my native language, but that doesn't work like that, yeah? No, so, it, so, <laughs> so that is an indication then that you have really... You are deep inside. You're deep, that. you have absorbed yeah. it, and you know what it is. So, okay. Yeah, so I, yeah, I, I'm... I'm confessing to everyone that I dream in PowerShell. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, so uh, th thanks, Jeff, for, for the nice uh, insights. I think w we can we can summarize our, our interview a little bit. Um, so you were talking about, uh, well, PowerShell c could be a hacking tool, but uh, it's more for management, but it could be also used for the bad guys if we've got uh, the possibility to use it at the certain hacking stage. We were also talking about uh, just enough administration which is also a very nice solution to limit uh, the functionality uh, of the PowerShell in, in someone's hand. We've got also a uh, desired state configuration, which is, uh, to be sincere, one of my favorites, because uh, co to configure it, it's a bit, it's a big challenge, because there are so different, so many A lot of moving settings, parts, right? and it is just a framework. Yeah. It's not just a turnkey, you know, I, I can do a configuration, I'm done. There's lots of moving pieces, and you have to decide how it's going to fit into your environment. So. But yeah, DSC is a key part here. It's, it's a key part. And, and in order to be able to be fluent in PowerShell, you have to spend your uh, at least couple of, oh, well, at least hour per day, maybe, if we could summarize it this way, to focus on uh, different kinds of uh, PowerShell uh, functions and so on, or at least to know one CMD left per day. Yeah. And <laughs> one, of the, the, one of the most popular books in PowerShell is one I co-wrote with Don Jones, and it's Learn PowerShell in a Month of Lunches. Oh. Okay. And the, the premise is you read a chapter over your lunch break, mm. because they're short enough, you can read the chapter, do an exercise, and over the course of a month, you should then know enough power shift to at least be proficient. To get, you won't know it 100%, but you'll know enough to get started. Get broccoli, get cauliflower. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, could, yeah. <laughs> we could have that bunch of CMD. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so uh, thank you so much. Thank Hopefully you. you guys like it. And uh, make sure that if you're going to have some questions uh, to Jeff or, or uh, about this interview or to myself, then make sure that you're going to post them in the comment section below. Uh, click, click on the link in order to view uh, the blog post about our great conversation here. And uh, we look forward to see you uh, again. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.